Hi and welcome to Deployment News, or should I say welcome back to Deployment News. It's been, uh, it's been a while. I started off this series well over a year ago and quite honestly I've been a slacker. I haven't done any sessions at all, but it's time to change that. So I'm Johan and together with me I have Amy. And we will be your host for this episode. And Deployment News is simply about the last few weeks of what's been going on in the MDT and Config Manager and general things that are related to that. So hardware and of course, fun stuff. Yeah, just shiny things that we find. Yeah. So tell me, what's what's going on in the, uh, in the industry right now? Well, there's something shiny going on out west, Johan. Shiny as in Vegas? Yes. Vegas is very shiny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the CES 2017 hardware conference, or there are other stuff too, but it's, it's like mainly a hardware one. Yeah. So what's coming out? What type of hardware is, is being released? Oh goodness, there's a lot of VR appliances that are coming out. Looks like consumer-based, which yes. is very exciting. Um, well, in, in fact, I've seen now from basically every major vendor are providing now virtual reality headsets or holographic headsets. And that's a sure indicator, in, in my opinion, that virtual reality is, is coming big this year. Yeah, for sure. With the, the coming of the Windows 10 Creators update this spring, yeah. I imagine all the hardware vendors are, are getting ready for their stake in the race. Yeah, I like 3D Paint. I'm looking forward to that. I actually have, if I go over to my demo machine real quick, uh, I made a shortcut or a favorite to Paul Thurrett's Twitter feed. And he actually posted yesterday a few images. So if you allow me to scroll down here, this is the one from Acer, their headset. But you also see that Dell has one, Lenovo has one, HP has one. Very cool. Something else that was announced also was the two-in-one machines. Let me bring up that one. So what's special about this one? This is the XPS two-in-one. Yes. Which is very shiny. Uh, what they've done here is with the release of the newest processor, they've actually gone with a Y model yeah. where you're you're going to get better uh, battery life, but you're exchanging performance. Uh, so this is going to be great for your road warriors, airplane warriors, where you know you need something up and running, uh, you know, 20 minutes on either side landing or takeoff, um, and you don't really want to sacrifice your, your battery life because you have a lot of work to do. So it costs your company a lot of money if you have downtime, you know, when the when the stewardess so politely tells you to to please close everything, well, now you don't have to. It's a two in one, so it does fit in that uh, category of being able to be on while while you're while you're moving. But again, like I said, you are sacrificing a bit of performance. So, what type of battery, battery life, life are we talking about? Nine hours. That's pretty good. Yeah. I have like three on this one <laughs> on, on a good day. Yeah. Yeah. Without the extra battery, of course. All right. We also had some new things from Dell. Yes. I have a link for that as well, or to that as well. So first one is the XPS 27, which is Dell's take on the market surface. And as you can see here, their, their pricing starts at 1500, whereas the Surface Studio is way more expensive than that, even in their you know, entry stage. Even in their entry stages. <laughs> Entry level, I entry believe level. is the word you're looking for. Yes, even in uh, even in the entry level stages. Yeah. Dell also announced the uh, first 8K monitor. So now I'm only looking for a machine powerful enough to be able to drive an 8K monitor. Well, I think there's one coming that's very shiny and very small that could at least do 4K. Okay. The about. Uh, Oh, Yay big? Yeah, the Intel NUC one. Um, I have them here. That's it's a coincidence, but uh, Intel are indeed releasing a new series of NUC devices, and they will have now the 4K support. So HDMI 2 and uh, Thunderbolt 3, which is replacing uh, DisplayPort. Yeah. What else is new in, in the NUC? They have a new storage technology that they're staging uh, for when it's ready for market later this year called 3D Crosspoint, where you're going to see better performance for SSD. And that is nice. Yes. Lots of VMs. Very nice. Yeah. All right. What else has been going on? 
Johan, there has been a rumor going on. A rumor that makes me very, very, very sad. It's not very shiny. There's a rumor out there that the command shell is leaving Windows 10. Have you heard this rumor? I've heard it. You, okay. Yeah. Well, you know it's a rumor, right? Yes. Okay. It's a not true rumor. Correct. As well. Uh, Microsoft has actually made a statement about it as well. It's very shiny. You can read the blog post, which I have available right here. Uh, but the, the gist of it is this, that Microsoft has customers, said customers have scripts, said scripts are lifeblood to the company. So Microsoft understands that as long as all of these are true, they need to keep the, the command shell around as well. Um, but also know that PowerShell, which is a lot more powerful <laughs> and more shiny, is available and, and, and should be used if you have the opportunity to use it, get to know it, especially this year. Uh, no particular reason other than it's very shiny and why not? You've waited this long, you may as well do it now. Yep, sounds um, good. But anyway, uh, it, it's, it's a great post to read when you have time. It'll only take a couple minutes to get through, uh, but gives you a little bit of history around it and just basically the statement is that no, it's, it's not leaving. Uh, what you'll see in an upcoming uh, Insider Preview build is that when you hit the Windows X command keys, yep. um, you'll just see PowerShell as the, the default. Yeah, so you don't have to it. change it anymore. You can just. Right. That's perfect. Yep. Or you can change it back. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Not going to do that. Another thing that's been going on in the Twitter stream this week has been around drivers, uh, where Mr. Frank Royas, sorry if I didn't pronounce that right, has published a blog post about a common issue they are seeing, and he works for Microsoft, they are seeing uh, customers mainly for Windows 7, but it's not limited to Windows 7. It's basically when you have fast machines, solid state drives, NVMe SSDs and things like that, drivers are sometimes not being injected correctly. Mm -hmm. So in that blog post, which I have here, you can see that in addition to um, how you can identify this problem, Frank also provides you with three different workarounds. Now, workaround number three, I don't like because it's based on auto apply drivers and I don't like that. I much rather prefer apply driver packages. And so far, uh, it seems that workaround number two is the one that is working best. At least it's uh, least amount of work and it seems to be really, really solid workaround for this. And we also worked with uh, an engineer from HP. So they have been testing it on their hardware as well and can confirm this actually does work. Yeah, I think there's a shiny blog post coming in he, relation to that. Yeah, he, he promised he would uh, allow us to publish that information as soon as we have it ready. So we're looking forward to that. Yes. Yeah. And speaking about drivers, there are things you can do to make your life a little bit easier around drivers in Config Manager. Yeah, so back in December, I wrote a very shiny post about using uh, Old Faithful Model Alias. Uh, Oh, is this the right post? Yep, for uh, driver management in Config Manager. Um, so this was also posted to our Facebook page where I got a really in interesting question and that was, well, why should I use this rather than, the specific question was WMI, but why should I use this rather than any other option out there? Uh, so a little backtracking, a uh, bit of a history lesson. Uh, we, we first need to stop and think about, well, what is it that Gather does? Because why not use Gather? Well, Gather, gets all the uh, local environment properties. It also gets LTI and ZTI properties as well. There's about 300 if you're counting. Uh, but what we're interested here in, in here is the, the uh, local environment properties that it grabs. Um, what it can't do on its own is make sense of the, we'll call them weird ones for, for models. So, like Lenovo. Yep, we're gonna call out <laughs> Lenovo. So they do a four plus three, yeah. where four is the actual model and then three is a special build number where maybe it means somewhere elsewhere but it really means nothing right here in osd yeah. um, so the reason that using model alias is great is because whereas when you use a wmi query it, it kind of depends on on what you already know so you already know what these friendly names are yeah um that, that you'd like to um give drivers to because there's also a sticker on the computer with it yeah Sometimes there's a sticker, sometimes there's not. It depends on how beat up it's been in, in the field, especially yeah. if it's just a, a refresh. <laughs> uh, but the bottom line is, I feel that model a alias is the best because it takes a lot of guesswork out. Yeah. Um, you know, when you start a, a normal deployment, um, you can use gather to get that information. You don't always have it there. Um, 
If you aren't sure what it is, uh, you can also use the MVT simulation environment with model alias. If you just want to spit it back out real time, if you're not even working in your deployment workbench or working in Config Manager, um, if you just want the information, yeah. you can have it. So then you can use a WMI query if you'd rather do it that way. But the brains behind all of it is model alias. So the script basically contains all the logic to convert weird vendor and model names into friendly yes. model names. Yeah. Check. Very nice, by the way. Thank you. All right. Then we have, um, for those planning to migrate to Windows 10, there were yeah. some changes recently. There has been a breaking change uh, <laughs> to upgrade analytics. Um, it's actually really important. It was announced back in December. The change actually goes live this month at the end of the month. Uh, but if you are using Upgrade Analytics to drive your Windows 10 pilots, you have some updates to apply. Uh, specifically, if, um, if you're reporting Windows 10 in your Upgrade Analytics console, you want to make sure that you are on uh, the latest, uh, the October 2016 CU. Uh, once you apply that, you do have to rerun your deployment script. Um, you also have KDs to apply whether you're on Windows 7 or Windows 8.1. So it's that version of Windows 10 and only that version or higher. Yeah, so the statement in, in the blog post is that starting then, on January 31st, the only supported version of Windows 10 that will display in the console is right now, this version okay. right now. Okay. Um, so the anniversary update. So tech is out there, I have a little bit of work to do. Yeah. Uh, what, what's really great about the post is it shows you how you can figure out whether or not your, your endpoints uh, fall into compliance or not, if you have work to do yeah. or not. Um, so if you just scroll through the, the post, you get all, all the information that you need. There's queries that you can use to figure out exactly what the workload is. But make sure that you read through it, especially if you're not sure, because I'd hate for that data to be gone uh, on February 1st or whenever your next sync is scheduled. Yeah. And speaking of scheduled syncs, uh, what's really driving this change is that before it used to be just one large data dump every 48 hours with no no offsets. Now they're doing those those delta changes. Finally. Um, yep, finally. I didn't really see any information on, on how often those deltas would be, but it's just nice that you're sending less information more frequently. Well, I'm, I'm totally crossing my fingers for it and, you know, at faster intervals because it's been a nightmare yeah. trying to, to work with this. Like, it's too late uh, to wait 48 hours. Yeah. Especially if you're in a lab and test environment, like, ah. Yeah, I, I always like to make the joke when I talk about it at user groups, you know, do this on a, on a Wednesday or a Thursday uh, and then weekend go, off. <laughs> go take your weekend because if you try and start this on a Monday, you're not going to have a very good week, but maybe that'll, maybe that'll change Hopefully. on February 1st. Another thing that was released recently was a new frontend by Nikolai. And I have a link to it here. It's a config manager frontend. It breaks my heart, but it's better than mine. Uh, he added in a ton of features into it. So it's just not a single page, it's actually multiple pages. It has settings file where you can configure what features in the wizard you want to enable, yes or no. So pretty much like how MDT and LightTouch does it, but this one is, uh, is for Config Manager. So uh, the pre yeah, it's very shiny. And the previous available for download, he's been working on it for quite a few months now. And uh, yeah, try it out. So that was it, right? Yeah, that's all we have for this time. Please let us know what you want to hear about in or see about in deployment news by leaving your comments below or simply contact us on Twitter, email, whatever. We are yeah. out there. You know how to find us. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.